remember me? Yes. Why are you here? What a great second season for Invincible. The first season was already a banger, and the second season took off from that. The cliffhanger ending was too good not to talk about. Let's get to the burning question. Will Nolan and Alan escape their prison? If so, how? We'll have to delve deep into Invincible comics to find out. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. How Nolan found himself in the prison. Let's go over the events that led to Nolan's imprisonment. If you've watched the first season, and I'm guessing you have, you know Omni-Man's truth. In the first season's last episode, Nolan realizes he loves his son too much to end his life. He then leaves Earth, failing his mission and becoming a deserter to the Viltrum Empire. After contemplating life and coming across a black hole, Nolan stays there for a while. He starts drifting toward the event horizon and the grief makes him unaware until he notices a Thraxan ship barreling in his direction. He saves the ship and takes the aliens back to their homeworld of Thraxa. This is where Nolan decides to stay, marries a Thraxan named Andressa, and has a child with her. He would later send for Mark. When Mark arrived, the father and son embraced each other. When Mark asks Nolan to come back to Earth, Nolan reveals to Mark about his new mate and their child, Mark's half-brother. He then explains to Mark that he was called to help him protect Thraxa from Viltrumites. Mark's half-brother has purple skin, and his mother belongs to a supposed lesser race. So, the Viltrumites would not spare the baby. After the Viltrumites' arrival, Mark takes Andressa and the baby to safety, while Nolan fights the enemy. One of the Viltrumites, Lucan, attempts to attack Andressa and Mark, but Nolan returns just in time to disembowel him. The duo nearly kills the other two Viltrumites, but Lucan, still alive, ambushes Nolan and breaks his spine. Ending the fight in the Viltrumite's favor, Nolan is taken away for imprisonment, while Mark is warned about his inevitable duty as a Viltrumite himself. Before going, Nolan tells Mark to read his books. Hey, just cut me some slack. Jeez. Alan's side of the story. Let's find out how Alan, the alien, found himself in the same place as Nolan, a fan favorite and my favorite. A lot has happened to the funny Yanopin in the TV series. After a date gone horribly wrong, Alan was left to die by the hand of the questioning Viltrumites, having protected the council. Alan was taken and transferred into a stasis pod to let him rest and heal. After months of sleep in the status pod, Alan finally wakes up, surprised to know he's still alive, unaware of his new ridiculously buff body and unparalleled strength. He tears the pod apart by moving around. After receiving a physical examination from a nurse bot, he's greeted by Thetis. Thetis explains and apologizes to Alan for not holding out hope for Alan's survival. He tells Alan that his body adapted and changed due to the Viltrumite's attack on him, and as such, he is now beyond or close to a pure-blooded Viltrumite's power level. Alan doubts but then takes his revival and strength as a blessing. Thetis later reveals that he is a Viltrumite deserter and has rebelled since he abandoned the Viltrumite cause. Alan is also told to only report to Thetis as there might be a mole in the council. Alan is tasked with finding suitable recruits for their fight against the Viltrum Empire, who better to recruit than his Earth friend, Invincible. Thetis believes that Invincible might be the key to ending the Viltrum Empire once and for all. Later, Alan arrives at Earth's outer orbit, where a grieving immortal intercepts him. Thankfully, Invincible finds out about the guest in Earth's orbit and arrives at the scene before the misunderstanding causes more issues. Invincible then takes Alan to a safe place, his university dorm. Aliens are pretty okay on a university campus now that Omni-Man has wrecked the hero and Earth has seen better days. Alan's presence startles Mark's roommate, but they continue their conversation. Alan asks Mark to join him in a rebellion against the Viltrum Empire, stating that Thetis revealed himself to be a Viltrumite, and he requires Viltrumites like Mark and Nolan to further the Council's cause. However, Mark refuses for now, since he has to deal with problems on Earth. Mark also tells him that Nolan is currently imprisoned and that he doesn't know where. This is a silver lining, though. Before Alan leaves, Mark shows him his father's books. Alan confirms Mark's suspicions about the books, Mark had read the stories in the books and figured out that the tales were too specific to be pure fiction. They could easily be real-world anecdotes. Moreover, there must be a reason why Nolan asked him to read them. Alan and Mark realize that the anecdotes must be a list of unknown threats that could counter the Viltrum Empire's sheer power. Alan pulls out a fancy device that scans the stack of books in but a few moments. He then departs Earth and goes towards his base in Telescria. By a stroke of luck, he comes across a stationary Viltrumite warship. Even better, a Viltrumite, none other than Anissa, confronts him on his way. He seizes the perfect opportunity to test his newfound strength, quickly taking a direct punch. 
Anissa is surprised and brings him in. After all, a Unopin strong enough to take a powerful hit from a Viltrumite must be dissected and studied. Alan figures he might as well be captured to find Nolan. He then pretends to be taken out by Anissa's next hit, and Anissa takes him in as a prisoner. A unique friendship born of unique circumstances, Alan's plan works. To his surprise, when he's being brought into his cell, he sees a beat up Nolan being taken away. He immediately uses his power to speak with Nolan telepathically, letting him know it's nowhere near the end of the line for the disgraced Viltrumite. A dejected Nolan is somewhat reluctant to attempt a prison break. However, the pair bonds over their loved ones. Alan explains the Unopen rules and how he's forbidden from a relationship with his lover, Telya. Nolan then opens up about Deborah and how his relationship goes against Viltrumite's beliefs. Over time, they become friends, and Nolan finally realizes he's in love with his wife and must not give up. Meanwhile, Alan waits until the day of Nolan's execution date for his plan. Here's the funny part. The whole time, the unnamed alien race responsible for the prison tries various methods to execute Alan, but keeps failing. Eventually, they give up. Alan wonders why Nolan's execution is taking so long. According to the Viltrumite Code, a Viltrumite must be in perfect health before execution. As such, the Viltrumites in charge, the executioners, take advantage by regularly beating up Nolan in the name of questioning. Not that Alan knows about Viltrumite customs. Finally, Nolan's execution day arrives, and Alan jumps straight into action. Prison break, or rather, break the prison apart. After tearing his shackles apart like paper mache, Alan uses his device to scan for formidable prisoners for his plan. What plan, you ask? Pretty simple. Step 1. Do extensive damage trip every alarm possible, and cause maximum distraction. Step 2. Free all the prisoners so they wreak havoc on the base. Of course, he accomplishes both objectives simultaneously to save time. What about the scanning part? That's step 3. Oddly enough, he comes across Battle Beast and manages to strike a deal with him. Battle Beast agrees to help him until their goals align. That is, until they all break out of prison. From then onwards, they're all on their own. Honestly, Battle Beast is such an oddball of a character. He opens by screaming, who is brave enough to free Battle Beast? Meanwhile, elsewhere in the prison, Nolan's execution ritual is taking place. Man, what a primal ritual. Two Viltrumites keep the other Viltrumite shackled while they beat him to death. It's too bad for the unnamed agent and the executioner. They'll get a beat down soon. Alan, Battle Beast, and other brave souls interrupt the sacred ceremony. Battle Beast loudly proclaims to choose one of the Viltrumites to fight, and Nolan cannot believe the goofiness of it all. Battle Beast asks the other executioner if he's a Viltrumite, the fabled world conquerors of the universe. If so, then he must face them in battle right now. That's okay with Nolan and Alan. They could use the help. The next few moments can only be described as sheer pandemonium, almost like a bar fight among drunk patrons. The room breaks out in a fight, as Battle Beast picks his Viltrumite to fight against. Alan and Nolan deal with the other one. As for the others, let's just say they're being annoying. Alan has an idea. He can survive in space, and so can the Viltrumites. Battle Beast? Maybe? He immediately punches a hole through the walls of the prison ship, compromising the hall's integrity and spewing out all the alien guards near it. The Viltrumite agent quickly turns around to attack Alan, but it's not his day. Alan and Nolan have the same thing in mind. Both of them wind up with a powerful punch to the agent's face, and with nowhere else to go, his head is squashed like a melon under a boulder. Quite the gruesome end for the unnamed agent. Nolan wonders how strong his new friend is, considering Alan got off quite scot-free from the engagement. After making short work of the agent, the duo turns around to see Battle Beast with a huge smirk plastered on his face. He's having the time of his life, beating the hell out of his opponent. They leave the Viltrumite's fate in the hands of Battle Beast, who is winning his fight. They get ready to leave the crime scene, as they are expecting Viltrumite reinforcements any time now. Alan is expecting reinforcements. Nolan reassures him that no more reinforcements are coming. He reveals to Alan that not only are the Viltrumites far away, but there are less than 50 pure-blooded Viltrumites in the universe, which is why it's not impossible to deal with the Viltrum Empire in its current state. This is why the Empire was spread so thin and another reason his execution was delayed. By law, they were required to send two Viltrumites over for Nolan's execution. This fact was a secret they didn't want anyone to know, and it's why Nolan is confident in the rebellion he learned from Alan. <laughs> Marvelous verdict. Now, that's a prison break and a half. What can I say? I love Alan the Alien, and I love Nolan. So, forgive me if I'm a little biased about a story with the two involved. Alan and Nolan's friendship was the catalyst that finally changed Nolan. He finally accepted his love for his wife, Deborah, and son, Mark, and decided to take a stand against the Viltrum Empire. 
He grew as a character, and who doesn't love stories of villains turned heroes? We'll have to wait for the next season to find out how the story will pan out in the TV series. Until then, thank you for watching, and see you next time. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.